Bill Gates is a good guy because he gives his money away not for creating the money. Creating the money was motivated by what? By self-interest. By his selfish desire to accumulate money. To create a product he believed in. But those are selfish desires. Therefore, it can't be moral, we are taught. Morality is about other people. So giving to other people, that's good. Making the money, eh. Worst case, it's evil. Best case, it's neutral. And this is true of every philosopher, almost every philosopher since Aristotle has held this view. With a few exceptions here and there. Morality is about denying oneself. It's about being selfless. It's about helping others at your own expense. If you help them and it didn't cost you anything, eh, you don't get any moral credit for that. You only get moral credit when, it, when it's painful, right? Yeah, you know, we have a major religion whose symbol is the sacrifice of one man for everybody else. And the symbol is made real. The sacrifice is made real by putting on a cruci you know, crucifix and blood streaming down. Because you want to make it clear that he suffered. He didn't just do it. You know, it wasn't just cost less. It really cost him. The more pain you engage in when you're helping other people, the more we value it ethically. Now, a moral system like that, of self-sacrifice, of self-denial, of selflessness as a moral ideal, where Mother Teresa is the hero and Bill Gates is the villain, a system like that cannot be compatible with capitalism. Capitalism is about rewarding Bill Gates and ignoring Mother Teresa. It's the exact opposite. Capitalism is about selfishness, not about sacrifice. It's about pursuing one's own self-interest, not about sharing. We're all brought up with the idea sharing is the virtue. Share one's wealth. And then we're surprised when politicians want to share our wealth with other people. That's just an outcome of that sharing in the, you know, in the sandbox where we played with our toys and a strange kid would come up and they wanted to play with the toys too. And all good parents tell the kids, you've got to share. It's a duty. doesn't matter if you know the kid, don't know the kid. If he's nice, not nice, you've got to share your toys. It's not an issue of trading. It's just sharing for the sake of sharing. Because the kids notice very early on, I'm sure, that if a stranger came up to the parent and asked for the car keys for the day, <laughs> the parent would say, no way. But we demand that our kids share. And it's, a, it's an interesting psychological issue. Why do, why do we do that? Because we as parents have become cynical about the world. We know that we can't just share stuff with the strangers. Right? It's, it's just not practical. But we want to project our ideals on our kids. So we want to project this socialist, communist utopia onto our kids, even though we know we can't live in it. We know that it's not a reality we can actually live in, that it's not practical. But ideals are still on the left. I mean, I still meet people all the time who tell me, yeah, I'm a capitalist, but, you know, socialism is a great idea. You know, it's, an, it's a wonderful ideal. You just can't. It just doesn't work. What can you do? No. Our argument is that socialism is an evil idea. It's not great in theory, bad in practice. It's awful in theory and awful in practice. Evil in theory, evil in practice. Because the revolution that Ayn Rand really creates is a moral revolution. It's a revolution that says it's self-sacrifice, that being selfless, that placing the interests of other people above your own interests is wrong. It's immoral. And it's the core of what leads to socialism. Socialism is the necessary outcome. Some form of statism is the necessary outcome of that kind of ethic. And that she says if you really want to defend capitalism, then one needs to discover morality that puts the individual in his own life at the center. That says that the purpose of morality is not to deny your own life, to put it down, to give it up, to sacrifice it. But the opposite, that the purpose of morality should be to establish a code of values to allow 
want you to prosper in your own life, to make the most out of your own life, to live life to the best that you can live it for you. And that never means lying, stealing, cheating, backstabbing. It just doesn't. All you have to do is look at somebody like Bernie Madoff to see that. Now, was Bernie Madoff a happy man? He was a rich man before he was caught. Rich man. But was he a happy man? And it's interesting that I, as a capitalist, have to remind people that you know, a good life doesn't just mean money. Right? It means everything that a good life means. That money is just one component out of many components. So think about Bernie Madoff's life. Who did he steal, steal and cheat? You know who Bernie Madoff is? I assume everybody knows. The guy who just did this pyramid scheme. <laughs> his friends and his, his closest friends. Other Jews from the country club, right? All his, almost all his victims were Jews. Almost all of them were friends. He had to lie to them every single day. He had to lie to his family every single day. His sons landed up turning him in. Imagine the family dynamics there. Very healthy. Right? He had to lie to his customers. Everybody he interacted with every single day, he had to engage in lying. Now, I'm sure all of you have lied in your life. Once, twice, a few times. No, no. Good. Does any, I mean, real lies, right? Does anything ever come of lying? Anything good? To your own life, to your own happiness. Is happiness achieved through the mechanism of lying? And how many times does one lie, can you just get away with one lie? One lie almost lead, always leads to another lie. And it's corrupting. It corrupts your ability to think. It corrupts your ability to engage with other people. It corrupts your ability to live. And Bernie Madoff, according to, according to what I've read, you know, he was eager to be caught. He couldn't wait. When he was caught, it was a sigh of relief because his life was so miserable having to live the kind of lies that he was living. Every night he fell asleep thinking about whether tomorrow would be the day he would get caught. And imagine he'd never been caught. Imagine he died. But every day he had to think about the possibility of being caught. Every day he had to think about what lies he told, what lies he would have to tell so that he wouldn't get caught in those lies, right? Lying involves a lot of thinking about how to stay afloat, right? How not to get caught. I used to tell this story in some seminars I was doing for, for, for a company and we talked about honesty and lying. You know, and I, I told this to a guy who goes, to, who goes drinking with his buddies and comes home and tells his wife, he works late. Um, and, you know, is that the end of the story? One lie, I worked late, and he actually was, was out drinking. Well, it turns out it's not, right? Because if she, if his wife has a sees his friends, they can't mention the fact that they were all out drinking because then she would discover that he wasn't working late. Um, you know, and it, there's a whole string of lies that you have to tell once you tell that first lie. And somebody raised his hand in the audience and said, I knew a guy like that. He used to go out drinking with us. He used to go home and say he was out late. So one day, his wife picked up the phone and called his boss and said, why are you keeping my husband late at work all the time? <laughs> Didn't help his marriage, right? <laughs> lying just is not a practical methodology for living a good life. Neither is lying, neither is cheating, neither is stealing. They're just not good for your own life. They're hurtful. So Ayn Rand says... Morality, the whole science of morality, should be dedicated not to figuring out how you can deprecate yourself and put yourself down and sacrifice yourself, but the whole science of morality should be dedicated to figuring out what's really good for people, what can really make people happy, what will really make people successful and prosperous, what kind of virtues, what kind of values should people pursue in order to be happy, in order to live